Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's February second. This will be our chart lesson for today. This will wrap up our week. Um, no chart lesson on Fridays anymore. So um, hopefully we've had a good week. We've had a pretty good week of trading. We've had some pretty good movement. Um, seemed like there was one day in here. Maybe it was. Um, I think it was maybe Wednesday. It was this day. I think that. Uh, it was a little bit difficult at times or maybe it was yeah that was I think it was this day Wednesday you can see that it had a lot of different characteristics to it so and I know a lot of people tell me they struggled with that one but um, once again today we had this kind of um, line in the middle really today is a trading range day notice that this was the highs of the overnight we did kind of break above that for a minute but most of the day most Probably 95% of the trading today was in between this overnight high and this overnight low. Actually, the overnight high was right here. I'm sorry. This is in the previous day. So that's still considered part of this overnight trading, though. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is yesterday. This is the break. This is where it opens uh, for yesterday afternoon. So I'm, I'm confusing you there. Uh, I forgot how I had my blue set up here. But um, this is the over, this was the close yesterday afternoon. So from this line on over into this blue is the overnight. The white is the regular trading. And then from this blue over is from two o'clock to the close today. So um, this stuff between this line and here is your overnight trading. So there's your high right in there. Here's your low and 90% of today's trading. Maybe looking at it for this being the overnight high, uh, I would say I'd maybe drop that to maybe 90% of the day. So it's still pretty much a trading day. You can see we're swinging above and below the EMA really all afternoon or from 9.30 in the morning on really. So uh, it's a trading range day for the most part. Um, we did have a two-tiered channel working up. We had a uh, close here. I, I, I want to say this is two-tiered. You might could even make the argument. It doesn't matter. You still kind of get to the same place. Um, it may be a, just a big overshoot here, and because but we just really went sideways after that. We never could get a new high, but this is just a really strong move. That um, you know it's going to be probably hard to match that if it's not a strong trend day. And this is not a strong trend day other than this two-legged move. And notice the arrow here. There's that first move up. So once we started going higher, that's what I'm using for a target. And you can see that got us within a tick or two of the top. So that was a good target. And um, you would also look for the target to be this upper line, just a measured move. Get the difference between this line and what you originally had and go that equal distance. And that gives you this target right here as well. So. Um, and when you get a measured move that gets you really close to that, that's probably should be what you shoot for as your target. And um, that seems to work out pretty consistently. So, but yeah, you could trade this for the most part both ways today. Um, we had a little bit a period where it was mostly up and a little bit of period where it was mostly down. But you can see this. Um, this is probably really close to the midpoint of this high and low here. I didn't measure it, um, but I do believe that's, you, you know, we've seen this a lot the last couple of days is that it acts as resistance and part of the day and then support the rest of the day. So hopefully you, you spotted that and it's important to spot that because it will help you. But let's back out, talk about the trades, and we will wrap the week up and um, be done for the week. So first trade I saw, we come in, we're really going sideways here. Uh, we made it, we're making a little bit higher highs and higher lows, but it's not real strong. So when we first broke higher here, I was treating this like a failed breakout to the upside. Um, the reason. This probably would have been, if this would have been the signal bar here, right here, I probably would make this red, but it's not. This is actually your signal bar, and it's too, it's very bullish. So you have to, but what you, but since this is a kind of an inside bar and so bearish, completely reversal, uh, you could use that for a 
an entry on a failed break and then but your stop still has to go above this bar so for that reason i made it green it's a really big bar but you could have let it break lower right here and dropped the limit order a few ticks back to see if it would have helped and look how it came back and you would have got filled and it would have still moved down and um, you just would have gotten out easier and quicker um Normally, I would say wait on this lower high, but that's too bullish as well, so you don't want to enter there. You don't, you could only enter here, and then that one's iffy, but you definitely don't want to enter below this one, and you see you would have got stopped out. And when it reversed here, um, that's a second entry long, and we're still making another higher high, so I like going long there. Uh, sometimes it's hard to change gears, too, so if you were in here, it makes it a lot harder to spot this one because all you're thinking is, you're short you you know you're hoping you read it right for a longer term move so sometimes those are hard to do but if, as you get better and more experience you can find those but look what happens we, we move up that's a quick easy move then you get a first entry short you pull back you get a second entry short uh, but you don't want to be going short there for out you know you want to measure this leg for one thing and so you're looking for a possible measured move, which that puts prices way up here. But notice how we made a double top there. And you got all those matching highs. Well, you don't want to go long into that double top when we've tested that price level one, two, three, four, five times. But when it ticks higher, that's a trap. So um, now you can go short on a short trap. And look at it. That was a nice, easy move. And of course, it bounces down here right off the trend line, confirms that trend line. Uh, it's not, you got a little trend line working lower, so you can't go short there. You get your break here and you try to go lower twice. And prices fail both times. Plus, it confirmed every time it's confirming that trend line. Look, it pushes through a little bit, but notice how you close inside that trend line every single time. Uh, when we broke above this bar, that's a really bullish bar. Go long right there. And that would have been a nice move. You probably want to exit right up here. Notice how it pushed just a little bit higher, but it's not worth hanging on for that. Um, and then notice that this is a double bottom. It's really kind of a triple bottom there because we, and there's a little bit of a trap there too because it went lower than you had a higher low and it turned out again. So really you could treat that like a second entry short there in a trap. And, uh, but I guarantee you there's some shorts trapped right there. That's a double test of this low. Tested it once, twice. So that's another reason to like that one. Uh, but notice your new low here. This is a new low. First entry, pullback, second entry. It fails. And you're looking for prices to push higher uh, here. You did get a break in a new high already. You don't want to go short there because it's not bearish enough. So when it reverses, you've really got a reversal pet. Uh, pattern there and it could be that there's a flatter longer term trend here so i like going long there it didn't quite work but notice what happens it does come back again and fails and when it tests that ema again and holds and turns up and you want to go long uh and if i was rem i'm probably adding on there and i think this is the trade that somebody asked me about they went short uh, I'm trying to remember exactly. This looks like the place they were asking me about. I'm not sure that this is it. I think that they, yeah, this is it. I'm pretty sure. If it's not, it's just like this. But they looked at this like a failed um, second entry short and went long. Long. Yeah, that's what they did. Okay. They actually went long here, which was not a bad move because I, I liked it too. But what happened was when it pulled back here, he got scared, and he exited the trade with a loss, and if he had just left his stop where it was, it would have worked out fine. And that's why I like to tell people, don't monkey around so much with your trades, because that's a, by exiting here and taking a loss when the trade worked out fine, even though it was a little scary, that is a mental error. And you don't want to have losers because of mental mistakes. You want to have losers because you were wrong. And even though they tried to fake you out and make you think you were wrong here, you were right if you went long right there. So there's some reasons to question. If this wasn't a trap on a failed second entry short, uh, I'd probably say don't be going long right here. But it's also a little bit of a breakout pullback. 
you know, actually I had this line right up here and that is, you know, notice all that resistance and then it's like a little breakout pullback plus it's a trap to the short side. So lots of reasons to like that trade to the long side. I ended up moving this down just because it fit a little better down here. But really, um, maybe I should have moved it up because it does look better there. And that really, and that's a double test of this level once we push through. Um, so that's another reason I like going along even better there. Um, so anyway, hopefully by me explaining that, I'm assuming maybe he's watching the video. I've already replied to him on his email, but maybe that'll help him. But then notice now we've got a close outside and we've got two legs up and then we're coming down. We get a close outside and you low and reverses. Normally I might say you would try to go long here, but it's not a good enough signal bar. So you just got to skip it. And notice you get another little breakout pullback short right here and it bounces. Look at that trend line, how we're bouncing off of it every single time. That's a nice trend line. Look how we bounced off of it every single time. But I would have liked to have seen a tick lower here. And even then, you're still going long at the high of the day, right into the overnight highs, too. So that's really risky. But, um, you know, we've already overshot this once. So you got to be thinking maybe we're going to make a measured move. And this is just a midline. And, but it's still risky there. So for that reason, it's, it's green. Um, I just think you're better off to skip that one, but it did turn out to be a really nice trade. And if, you know, sometimes if you're reading the price action properly and, you know, you get rewarded for risk if you're right. But if you're wrong, it's, you know, especially if you're wrong a lot, it's not worth being real risky. But if you're pretty good at reading the price action, you're going to get rewarded uh, because you would have had a runner here and you could have ridden this all the way to the top. You had a couple of different ways to get a measurement of where we were probably going. And you ride it out and you exit right up here. And if you exit a tick before it touched, you get out within maybe three ticks of the top. And you just can't do any better than that. You're never going to get all of every move. So, And if you can get within a tick or two of the all of a move, you've done extremely If you can get within a point or two of all the move, you've done really good. So when you can make it work out where you get out within a tick or two, you've had an extremely successful trade. So keep that in mind. But notice we get a break here. Uh, we try to go higher once. We try to go higher twice. And somebody else, I think, sent me something on this trade, and they went long here. So I hope you can see, even though... Um, even though that's a second entry long with a fairly nice looking setup, I hope you can understand why you never want to go long right there. Um, not unless this was a runaway trend, but we just had two tiers up and where'd we come off the high side? We're probably at least going back uh, to the to the midline. You know we're going to probably go back to the EMA at the minimum, but the fact that we just had such a huge move up, we're probably coming back to the midline and I'm betting we're probably coming back to the trend line. So, but I'm not, you know, if I got a really good setup off the midline, I might go long, but I'm definitely not going long right here. Two ticks into the high of the day after a move that far, and you're not even back to the EMA yet. You're not going to get a lot of good setups away from the EMA unless it's like this and you got a trend line working up, and even then it's dangerous. So keep that in mind. So you shouldn't be going long here, and by sitting tight, you get a chance at this trap. The only reason this one is not red is because it's not really a good reversal pattern. We're still way away from the EMA. We didn't push through it in any kind of form or fashion. But you figure we're coming back to the midline here and maybe the EMA. So you might enter here by letting it break lower and then dropping the limit order, maybe a tick back in, and see if you can get a little better entry and see what happens. And you may catch the high of the day here. It did turn out to be the high day. You wouldn't have probably ridden this all out with all these corrections, but you could have got this whole move here by catching this high of the day. But by waiting, you generally are going to get a safer entry. Very rarely will you, you know, miss a really good trade by waiting. And notice here, you wouldn't have missed one either. It, it gives another little pullback. It confirms that trend line. Um, it goes higher first and turns. It goes, look how bearish. You could have actually gone short on a stop already waiting there, but I don't have any problem putting a stop right there. 
and it's off to the races again. You probably wouldn't have got a runner on this one, but guess what? It does push through the EMA, pulls back, and tests that EMA. Look how bearish that bar is. I like adding on right there or entering again. And then you do get a runner, and look at it go. And if you added on there, you weren't out on this first one, and you add on, and you got two sets of going here and two runners going, two sets of runners, that's when you make some really nice, um, you make the really nice money, so to speak. So... Um, I will say it was tempting to enter here too. Um, I wasn't sure where this midline was at really until we bounced and, you know, it still might even be here, but I can't make the midline fit really well there. Uh, you know, there's nothing to, to show you for sure if that's where the midline is. So I had it right here and, uh, you know, if you go your equal distance, and I believe this is it, and you got a uh, an overshoot here, and then you got your bounce on the after the retest after the overshoot, you get a little channel working up, you get a break of it, a new high, get another little channel working down, a break of it, a second entry short, a new low, and then it's going higher again. So it all played out really well. These are probably a little harder for somebody that doesn't have the experience finding these trend lines. It's not really that hard to find the trend line because you draw it off the first couple of swings and then when it comes back here, you got it. Um, and it's, you know, the third touch is the confirmation and the fact that it went right through the EMA and closed below it, that's a good sign. And But even if you didn't want to take that one, you got one more chance right here. And that is a beautiful move down right there. That's the kind you like. But anyway, with this overshoot, if you see this, and being that far away from the EMA and expecting that we're probably going to try a retest attempt, uh, you might go long there. It's a little small two-tick uh, two bar. Uh, your stop would need to go below this bar. So it's really about three bars, even though it's real tiny. But uh, you probably wouldn't have even got in that. It took off so quick. Uh, you may not have been able to get filled. You definitely wouldn't have got your stop in, but you probably could have put a limit order there, and it may have come back and filled it if you were lucky. Uh, but you may have missed that one, and you don't really get another chance to enter. There's another big move up that you just don't get much chance to enter. But a lot of times you catch this, you, you catch an important low or a low of the day, and even though it wasn't the low of the day, that's an important low, and you would have got a nice move out of it. And you just never really get another chance to enter that. And then look at this little move here. It's just a miniature version of this whole pattern right here. It looks exactly like it. You get the failed second entry long, a little bit away from the EMA, just like right here. You go short, it works out just like it did here. You don't get this other shot. It's bouncing before then. And notice how this one bounced down here, and then this one bounced down here, and it runs up for another nice move. And actually, I would have been probably thinking, uh, I would have measured this move on this one. And I would have been considering a possible move here. You don't ever get it, but you don't ever really get a chance to get in anyway. So you don't want to go long right here. It's just a first pull back. It's not even really to what looks like a trend line there. Trend line looks like it's right up through right where I have the line drawn. And then look what happens, though. You come down, you get a first entry, you push right, look how bearish that is. And you get a second entry, and it fails right there. Um, the only reason I didn't like that one is we've moved so far. You don't, Anytime you enter that far away from the EMA, it's risky. In this case, it would have worked, but it's just too risky to enter there. So it was really, even though you had some good moves here, they were really hard to catch. There's just no safe way to really catch them. You might have considered this one, since it's still inside that trend line, it's a failed second entry long. Um, there's probably a lot of people saying, hey, we're way away from the MA, we're probably gonna snap back. So you might consider that one for uh, an aggressive type trade, but I'll be honest with you, uh, that late in the day, I'm not risking that trade personally. Uh, especially not right into that little double bottom there. Um, you have to think maybe this is our target, but you just don't know that. And it turns out that's what it is, but you don't know that ahead of time. So but notice what happens. You get a break here, 
and you get a first entry short, pull back second entry, a big bearish bar, a little double top there. There's your trade, and that was just simple. So this one's this is the much better trade, and you got just as much out of this one as this one. So and then watch what happens. Now you got a break here, you got to move to a new low, and notice this is where I had this line pulled back down. And you try, you know, this is basically another test of that level, and it bounces, and everything on this one is fulfilled, other than you might get two legs, but I still think even if we were, we'd probably come back before it went lower again. And so I like going long right there. And then um, we actually got a reversal pattern here. I would have liked, you know, if this was not into the 2 o'clock hour, I'd be going long right there. It's a little breakout pullback long. It's a failed second entry short. Um, notice the new low, first entry, second entry. Look out, push through the EMA, pulls back, and man, look at it go. That's your perfect reversal. And somebody actually uh, made a comment, and I never did get a chance to reply, and I probably won't on the uh, video, I think it was yesterday's video, but they talked about a perfect reversal and how they spotted it and, you know, how easy it was to see. Doesn't everybody see it? Well, the answer to that question is a very strong no. <laughs> everybody doesn't see it. Um, once you train your eye for it and once you know to look for it, then you can see it. But there's so many people that, you know, that'll be trying to get, you know, they'll be trying to go in the opposite direction. They'll be trying to get long right here. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's not as easy to see. You know, the fact that you could see it easy, that's a great. And I can usually see it pretty easy because I've seen it over and over for years. But you'd be surprised that not everybody sees it. And, uh, you know, I get questions every day on, you know, why did this trade right here fail? Well, that's a not, you know, that's not a perfect reversal pattern either. So um, let's back up. Where was one we just talked about? Uh, yeah, right here. You know, one of the things is it shoots right through the EMA without much resistance. And it pulls back on a failed second entry short. And notice that new low, first entry, second entry. It's basically two measured legs. Uh, so that's a place where somebody that's not paying attention is looking to get short. You can see that. And it fails. And you got everybody trapped and you go long. And, you know, I've got videos on that on the website and on the YouTube. And uh, so go watch those if you're not familiar with what reversal patterns are. So, yep, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you had a good week. We'll be back again to do it Monday. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.